Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. From the dark they came and found the souls of lords within the flame what's up y'all i am marcus also known as emb and welcome to a full-on let's play of dark souls 1. uh it occurred to me after finishing the bloodborne playthrough that i don't have the same quality level the same kind of holistic approach where i combine both gameplay and lore in an in-depth way for dark souls 1 that i do for bloodborne now uh, and it's really funny to me that because since the last time I really completed Dark Souls on camera, I've written two official guides and had a lot of interactions with From Software. And I, lo I know a lot more about their company, the way they make these games, and Dark Souls. So uh, this should be interesting to see, like, kind of a final take on all of this, especially as we start getting ready for Dark Souls 3. But. Uh, I am playing on the Prepare to Die edition on PC. Uh, I'm using the DS Fix mod for the 1080p, which it's really useful. You can really see these little environmental, like the bugs and stuff, the environmental details a lot better. I really like that. Um, and I am using one custom texture. I am using the Black Hard Leather by Magnanimous Mud. Uh, you guys can see it right here. Uh, has no gameplay effect whatsoever, but it looks really fucking cool, so I want to use it. All right, a, a nameless knight dropped a corpse down here that had a key on it. It was actually the key to our cell, fortunately enough for us. And if we look at it, it says, Key to the Dungeon of the Undead Asylum to the North. Uh, kind of uh, perhaps a hint that there may be more than one undead asylum. There is an undead asylum in the North, at least, and that's telling us where we are in the world. A mysterious knight, without saying a word, shoved a corpse down into the cell, and on its person was this key. Who was this knight, and what was his purpose? There may be no answers, but one must still forge ahead. Not really sure if he pushed the key down here for us on purpose, or if it was just a twist of fate. Doesn't really matter. That there may be no answers line is really interesting to me, and I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Uh, but for now, uh, we have the black separation crystal. This black crystal, long a symbol of farewell, is granted to banished undead. So if you're banished and sent to the undead asylum, I suppose, you can get this black separation crystal. The crystal sends phantoms back to their homes or sends you back to yours. Beware of fickle use of this item if you intend to nurture relations. wonder who gave that to you. The pendant, this is my gift item that I chose. A simple pendant with no effect. Even so, pleasant memories are crucial to survive on arduous journeys. Pleasant memories, indeed. We'll talk about the pendant later. Dark sign. The dark sign signifies an accursed undead. Those branded with it are reborn after death, but will one day lose their mind and go hollow. Death triggers the dark sign. Um, it's really interesting to me because this is telling you quite a bit about the nature of our character right there. Like, we are a normal human but we don't die we can't die and through repeated deaths we lose our self lose our will lose our minds and kind of turn into beef jerky like this uh just really 
really interesting. And what do you do with someone who won't die and you want to banish? Well, you just got to lock them up in a cell, right? And you see these guys have been locked up similar to, to what we have, but they have lost their minds. Hollows, if you will. This guy crying. I want to point out, see on the left side of his body, see this kind of growth, this kind of vein structure here. Hey, let me punch him and maybe we can get a better look. On the, the left side of his chest. Sorry about the knee there, bro. There we go. I want to point that out because we have something very similar, right? Really interesting, just kind of a mass of nothingness. Right there. Really nice playing on PC. We can actually see that pretty well in the 1080p setting there. DS fix for life, baby. Uh, and also we see a giant demon patrolling around over here. Somebody got hit hard. It's an interesting corpse too because it's got a bag on its head. It's got flies buzzing around it. It's kind of kind of unique there. <laughs> yeah, these hollows, man, they're in bad shape. They are in very bad shape. Don't pee in the pool, bro. Ah, <laughs> oh, the atmosphere of this place still gets me. And, I, man, it's it's just bringing back so many memories of the first time I played this game already. Just, oof, this is going to be a fun playthrough. Here we get our first bonfire of the game. Bonfire lit. In order to be all fast roll, I'm actually going to have to take that stuff off. <laughs> Back to no gloves, like always. If we look up here, if we look up here, we can see there's a giant demon standing on the roof. And it, it's very intriguing that in early concept art, there's actually a demon there, but it's not this kind of demon. It's actually a Taurus demon. So, uh, from the early concept to the final product, they actually moved those enemies around. And we're going to see and talk a lot more about those sorts of changes as we proceed. But, really cool to see that guy up there. And take a few steps forward. And you can see him down here! Uh, you can fight the Asylum Demon at this point, but there is absolutely no point to it. I mean, well, there is a point. You can get a weapon out of it, but... Uh, you can just get the weapon later through other means or you can just wait to New Game Plus and kill him on the first encounter where you have a weapon. To me, I consider it just a huge waste of time. It's not even a particularly great weapon. Well, I mean, every weapon has its uses, but I just don't particularly like it, so we're not going to fool with it. Whole lot of work, not a whole lot of... No, yeah, a whole lot of... I was about to say, a whole lot of work, not a whole lot of effort. It's a whole lot of effort for not a whole lot of reward, and I am not about that life. I love the crowdy, crowdy, the cloudy gray sky, the undead asylum, just very, 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 very fucking atmosphere. All right, now we got our longsword to battle, to battle. This hollow apparently still has enough wit to use a bow, but not enough wit not to fuck with me. First fog gate. Alright. Here we see the knight. The nameless knight from earlier. He's actually not nameless, but... <laughs> nameless knight from earlier. And he is in a room with... No exit. Right. It's, he's all walled in here. This would be the exit, but there's some rubble falling next to this gate. So, you can see the light streaming down. That's the courtyard, that's the bonfire where we were, and the asylum demon was on the roof over there just a minute ago. Can't reach this item just yet. Whoa! Whoa. 
And as we proceed up these stairs, classic FromSoft trap. I guess they have to have the ball down the stairs in every every game they ever make, I guess. And still got it. All right. Fantastic. My parry timing's a little bit... It's actually very difficult to get used to Dark Souls again after playing Bloodborne. Bloodborne is so fast compared to this game. Rusty iron ball there in the corner. See the hole in the roof. It looks like he was knocked down here, possibly by the uh, Asylum Demon, which we have already encountered ourselves. Hi. Oh, you. You're no hollow. Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I are both undead. Hear me out, will you? Uh, right there we learn a little bit about the hollowing process where he's going to die and then lose his sanity. Uh, death is certainly still a trigger for for an undead to hollow that one last final death that, where they lose the last bit of their sanity and it's interesting too that he knows he's about to hollow it's really really intriguing but as he said we're both undead so let's let's hear him out regrettably i have failed in my mission but perhaps you can keep the torch lit there is an old saying in my family thou who art undead art chosen in thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know, and I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask, an undead favorite. Oh. And this. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now, and thank you. So this knight was on a mission to, to perform a pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. Those who are, are undead are chosen. He wanted to go to the land of ancient lords and he wanted to ring the bell of awakening so that he could learn the fate of the undead. This is apparently an idea that was passed down through his family, which could be taken uh, as an indicator that uh, being an undead, the dark sign itself, is actually hereditary. We will see evidence against that later in the game, but uh, this is one piece of evidence that you could take as meaning, well, families are undead and it's passed down in that way now i must bid farewell i would hate to harm you after death so go now and thank you and as we leave the room he's going to die Fortunately, the hollowing process appears to take some time because even though he died right now, he's not attacking us as a hollow yet. <laughs> yet. Um, that character, there's actually quite a bit of cut content associated with that character. Uh, there was a text dump of a bunch of unused dialogue files that was taken from the Xbox 360 version of Dark Souls 1 a long, long time ago. Uh, and in that text dump, there there was a lot of really interesting unused content that that is is legit. Uh, and one of the things was that gentleman, Oscar of Astora. He just gave us the second floor east key, key to the iron bars on the east side of the second floor of the North Undead Asylum. Once again, North Undead Asylum, so they're very likely to be other undead asylums. The Undead Asylum is a giant undead prison segmented by countless iron bars. If an undead were to escape from a cell, passage to the outside world would not be gained easily. It's an undead prison, so as we saw before, what do you do with people who won't die that you want to get rid of? Well, you lock them up. 
Oscar also gave us this Estus flask. The Estus flasks are linked to the Fire Keepers. The Dark Tales also make reference. An emerald flask from the Keeper's soul. She lives to protect the flame and dies to protect it further. Uh, I think this is the only place in the game where the Dark Tales are actually referenced. Uh, so this could be part of the legend that he was talking about before that uh, the undead who are chosen to escape the northern undead asylum go to the the land of ancient lords in pilgrimage to learn the fate of the undead this this could be part of the dark tales but we don't really know this is just the only reference i think in the game to it an emerald flask from the keeper's soul and that's that's kind of a hint as to the nature of these estus flasks they're made from fire keeper's souls Uh, but Oscar, I'm gonna call him Oscar. Uh, maybe we shouldn't. He's actually just the the Asylum Knight in the final final version of the game. But uh, if you go by the cut content, Oscar, he was originally intended to encounter you at several different points throughout the game, and I'll try to talk about him at those talk about those encounters when we reach those points. But uh, it's worth it to note that content can be cut for a lot of different reasons content can be cut from games and this is just something that I've observed uh, it's not always sometimes it's because uh, there's not enough time to complete it uh, in the schedule like they just don't have time to finish it and so they have to cut it uh, that does happen but sometimes things are designed early on as a concept or kind of a rough idea or a sketch and then just quickly just as quickly as they're made they're discarded uh, so things like the the Taurus demon being on the roof, I don't think that's uh, I don't I don't think that's a, something particularly important. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like it, you could you could think about it. Well, there was originally supposed to be a Taurus demon there, but it's really just one like co piece of concept work, and it just doesn't really matter. Now Oscar may actually have more significance. I think that the reason that he was cut from the game is that. He makes things a lot more explicit than they are, and we know how much FromSoft, and particularly Miyazaki-san, like to just hint at things. Uh, some of the things that Oscar was going to say really, uh, really make the story a lot more explicit. And once again, we will talk about those en encounters as we get close. I did the uh, forward R2 jumping attack trick there. If you do it, if you normally, if you just fall off, fall from a height and press R1, you can do a, uh, a plunging attack, but if you jump forward and do the forward jumping R2 like this off the ledge, there's actually a glitch that lets you land that attack and then also land the plunging attack. Pretty, pretty crazy, but did a lot of damage too. The big pilgrim's key. Uh, we just fought a giant demon, and you might be wondering why these demons are here. Are they the jailers for for the undead? That's one possibility, and I think that's part of one of their part of their role. But it's really interesting to me that they also I think they also serve as a test or a trial. And when you read the Big Pilgrim's Key, it kind of starts to become a little bit clear as to why. Key to the inner door of the Undead Asylum main hall. Big key belonging to a chosen undead pilgrim. A chosen undead pilgrim. Not the chosen undead. A chosen undead pilgrim. But this chosen undead knows not what this pilgrimage has in store. So any undead in this asylum who is powerful enough to overcome the demon can have access to the key. So are you chosen because you're able to... Uh, are you able to overcome the demon because you're chosen, or are you chosen because you're able to overcome the demon? I think you're chosen. You're labeled as chosen because you can overcome the demon. Uh, we'll see more about the chosen undead and its nature as we continue. But very intriguing that getting this key that is supposed to belong to the chosen undead who can overcome the trial to defeat the demon there, uh, it leads you nowhere. There's only one place it can possibly lead. Like this, there's no, this doesn't get you out of the asylum. It doesn't get you to escape like into the normal world. All this does is lead you on your pilgrimage. That's the entire point. So 
it's just really, really intriguing to me. The undead are being gathered and imprisoned here by people who are perhaps fearful of the undead. They're undead or seen as accursed. And yet, someone has arranged for particularly powerful undead to be able to actually escape from the undead as asylum. But the only place that they're going to let them go is on a pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. Perhaps... The people who have, or the people or beings that have arranged this, are the same that have created the dark tales, or uh, spread the legend that a chosen undead is supposed to go on a pilgrimage. I don't know. Let's start our pilgrimage. Only in the ancient legends it is stated. One day an undead shall be chosen. To leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage. To the land of the ancient lords. Lordran. And just like that, we have arrived at the land of ancient lords, Lordran, and our pilgrimage has begun. Yeah. Alright, there's going to be a lot to talk about. We will investigate Firelink Shrine next time. Guys, welcome back to Dark Souls. Man, this is going to be fun. It, it's it's one, of the, one of the things, it's difficult to get used to the speed of the gameplay, uh, but another thing, <clears throat> it's really interesting to me to see how much of the things that I originally, people had accused me of, you're just guessing. Like, and there were lots of stuff that I just kind of speculated or tried to figure out. And I was wrong about some things, but these days I've realized I was right about a lot of stuff as well. And it's funny to me how explicit exactly a lot of the things are. Uh, especially when we start talking about some of the cut content as well. But uh, as, we, as we go through this playthrough, I think it's gonna... It's really going to help us get ready for Dark Souls 3, and Dark Souls 2 will follow it soon. Alright, guys, I am Marcus, also known as EMB. I will catch you next time. I gotta do the thing. We can do the thing again. Later, y'all. <laughs>